that to the what I call the wild greenhouse. So this is a little grass greenhouse in the middle of our, our other plot that still needs a lot of work done to it, as you can see. But we've got some chilli plants in here that were struggling a little. This is the ahi red now. It's a little bit wilted, I've just watered it. It's been neglected for the last few days after all the heat that's been happening. But if you remember correctly from a few of my other videos, the ahi red plants that I had had serious fungal infection problems. This one was included in that. But this one's still got a touch of it. But perseverance has meant that when we take off all of these sort of like fungal leaves, we keep doing it and then we cut it back a little bit. All this new growth kicks in and this one in particular now seems to be fungus free and is fully laden with fruit. Which the other one isn't at present, but the other one's still quarantined across there. As you can see, there's some of the, the older sort of leaves that were that were damaged by the, the infection. Now that seems, I can't see any evidence of it apart from the occasional little leaf here now. Which is good, which means the plant's now strong enough to be able to fight that off for itself. And produce all these wonderful sort of fruits. Now that's, that, that's brilliant. I was... I, I was I had kind of written this plant off because I didn't think it was going to give us anything. Um, some of the branches, it's, it's actually been so laden, these branches here have actually broken. With all these fruits on them, which is a shame, but there's plenty more up here to take their place. And as I said, it's the first time I've ever grown this anyway. So um, it, it's nice that I'm going to get something off of it. They actually look a little bit like the sugar rush peaches. It's slightly different. Oh, oh, they're related. I think this is a, a back of them as well. As you can see, the leaves are falling over. They're so heavy, they're falling over into my little um, high nine yellow lantern plant here. Nice little sort of segue into this one. It's not doing as well as the the one I've got across in the, the big allotment. But this one's got a lot of fruit on it as well. Um, even for such a small plant, which is good. The Kalugaritsa in here is kind of producing the fruits more to the shape that I imagined that they would be. And this is a much smaller plant again, but we're getting we're getting some ripe ones. I have one in my hand actually, a small one, off of this one, which is good. Um, these are just like a an addition to my jalapeno haul because they're, they're very similar taste and if just a little slightly bit sweeter. Refer back to my Caligaretsu tasting video that I, I did a couple of weeks back there. Um, they're very very sweet indeed. Mahi chombo on this one is attracting. The actual king of pests that always get attracted to the ahi chumbos for some reason. Now you can't see it in picture, but I'm going to fish it out just now for you. Is our um, little garden snail. This is quite a big one. But they quite like the chumbos, I've noticed. The, the smaller ones, the sm like the slugs, etc. Tend to eat holes in the, the actual fruit themselves. And I have an example of that on this one that I spotted when I came in. I thought, yay, we've got fruit. And I, then I went, oh no, they've been getting eaten. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're still okay. We've got some great, great little fruits here. I'll get some off of this anyway. We'll get a, a decent sort of, that one's been holed a little bit at the back. I don't know if you can see it just above my, my finger there. Oh, so... But the chombos are great, you know, even if I get a few of them, it's okay, they'll, they'll make a great sauce. Last year's sauce, I only made with sort of a handful of them, and it's I'm still using it. And here we are a year later. Some of the plants in here seem to be doing not great, but they're... This, this greenhouse is kind of open to the air at the top, there are sort of slats between the glass, so there's a, and, and there's panes missing, there's been a storm, this, it needs a major makeover. But they're still still giving us a good return. I mean, some of them that's a um, orange habanero. It's not it's not a great return, but it's got some fruit on it, which isn't too bad. I've got I've got a better orange habanero across the way. This is the red habanero that's in this allotment. I'm trying to find a fruit for you. There we are. They're not very big on this one, but they're not very big on the other one either. This is a um, Maruga scorpion, and it's massive compared to the other ones. It's it's weird how there's a kind of Reversal of fortune with all of the chilli plants with the the super hot is not doing so great across the way But doing quite well here. So this one's actually got quite a lot of little fruits on it and 
couple of big ones as well. Um, I wasn't expecting anything before now, so it's it's nice to see that it's actually given us a, a return. This is a, a Dorset Naga, and the fruits on this one, they don't have many on that one. I've actually got ripe ones um, across the way. So that one's doing better across there. The, this is the seven pot yellow, and this, if you remember from a video I did the other day, if you've actually watched it, you'll see that my seven pot yellow in the other greenhouse across the way is fully laden and weighed down with fruit, and this one's struggling a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's strange how the things that are doing well across there are doing badly here, and the things that are doing well here are doing badly over there. Um, here's another one. Case in point, this Armageddon isn't doing as well plant-wise as the one across the way, but I think it might it might just have more fruit on it than the other one, which is strange as well. The Puma across the way has got more fruit on it than this one, but this plant seems to be bigger and enjoying itself a little bit more. Maybe they, maybe they just like the cooler sort of weather. The Puma wasn't expecting anything at this point anyway because it's another one of those ones that needs a long season so um, I wouldn't be expecting ripe fruit off of this until maybe next month although I did have a couple this time last year from this very spot another puma plant that I had right here in this greenhouse when everything in here was all a little bit better prior to the storm this one here is a what is that one? I can't even read the label on it it's a butchalokia and looking at it, it's, it's already doing better than the Butchalokia that was here last year. It's got fruit on it, it's got flowers on it. The one last year, it didn't have any flowers on it until September and I think it got two ripe fruits off it prior to the plant dying in the frost. This here is a Fatale, and again, this one's doing better than the Fatale across the way. This one has fruit on it, the Fatale over there doesn't. I've noticed a lot of this, the sort of yellow and drop off of the flowers. That's because, I'm, I'm guessing that's because this greenhouse gets drier because it's more ventilated, obviously, more holes in it than across the way. It doesn't have the quite the humidity in here that the flowers need for the pollen to be able to stick to them, which in turn um, grows the seeds and ensures a successful fruit. Um, in this case, I think some of these are, are experiencing a bit of flower drop off towards the end for that reason, which is why when I water these, I try to water them onto the plant rather than at the base just to try and, and keep up the humidity level there's no point in watering the ground worrying about it because it just encourages the weeds as you can see i left those there just to illustrate that that fact this is my wild lombok that's over here and this plant is a lot healthier than the one that i have across the way the other one across the way obviously is in the ground directly in the ground but lots and lots of flowers and i still haven't seen any fruit on these and I don't even know what the fruit's supposed to look like, so I wouldn't be able to tell you when I do see one. There's a tiny little one developing. I don't know how far that's going to get, but it looks healthy enough. This one here as well, tiny little fruit developing. We'll just have to watch this. This is going to be a, a surprise to me, because this is, like I said, I've never even seen a picture of, of what these are supposed to look like, the wild lombok, and I've never grown them before. So that's, that's the sort of mini tour of this. Um, I'm going to go across to the other greenhouses now because I did do a short the other day about um, pests and did find that I had a kind of an aphid infestation so what I did was I sprayed those with a little concoction that I made myself and I'm going to go across now to see if that's made any difference. So here we are back across the small greenhouse. This little plant here had a, this little bunchy plant here I had a little bit of an issue with the aphids, I found a few on it but um, not so much that they're going to cause catastrophic damage to the plant. The same on this one, I think what's happened is they've been introduced, they've arrived on one plant and then they've spread from one to the next all the way around and there's kind of been a bit of a fire break at this area so the ones on this side don't have any but everything from there around right all the way over to here did and I'm king I'm blaming the ants for it because we've got ants in here and I think the ants have um, seeded them I think they found aphids from somewhere 
and have um, brought them in here. Before we look at the aphids though, this is the other ahi red. Uh, you can see the fruit is kind of ripening in this, but it doesn't look quite right still. This plant's still got that kind of a reptilian almost look. It doesn't have the, the fresh leaves of the others. It does have the aphids though, as you can see. Now, those aphids are, I believe, dead. As are the rest, which is why I brought you in here to have a look. The spray that I used has actually worked. I think it's actually killed them. I'm just like flicking the leaves and they're all just flying, popping off. There's no like attachment to them. So I think what I've done has worked. And if it hasn't, we'll, we'll give it another go. But let's have a look here. Yep, nothing there. Just the marks that they've left behind, as you can see the little sort of wounds on the leaves that they've left behind. That can just brush away. This one was the worst infected one, as you can see. It's lost a lot of leaves. And this one here, which, as, there we go, there we go. There's my evidence, there is the culprit, there is the ant running about frantically going, why are all my aphids dead? Where are my aphids that I placed here? Bugger. Don't get me wrong, everything in nature has a place. You know, aphids have a purpose, they're there for a reason. Um, the ants are there for a reason, the ants use the aphids, etc, etc. But not on my plants in my greenhouse, thank you very much. I need this stuff myself. Now, that's where they were hiding, why I didn't see them initially. When you see all these sort of yellowing leaves on the plant, I mean, just identify that. If you see that on your chilli plants, have a look on the underside and that's what you'll find probably. Their sneaky buggers are the aphids. They don't all. They're either sitting in the new growth at the top or they're sitting under the old growth near the bottom. And that's why it's important. If you do come up with a concoction of spray, what I used was just a little bit of neem oil and a little bit of um, dishwasher liquid in a any spray bottle just mix it up well and good give it a quick spray give it a shake every now and again because obviously the oil will separate from the water and um, i think oh we've got some life there i can see it crawling along so that that one is they're not all quite dead yet so i'll need to spray again but i think most of the ones up on the top here are goners maybe not there so we'll give that another spray before I leave today. But as I said, as a quick way to identify, I did have a look at these leaves and I did think, you know, there's something not quite right about them with them being yellow like that because there's plenty of nutrients in here. So it was only on that sort of closer inspection that I noticed that I had the aphids. And then on a further inspection that they'd spread quite far around the greenhouse all the way around so they're not quite as bad over there but there are some yellowing leaves on the underside of my fuego plant over there so that's just something to look out for as you see you shake the plant about and that's all the dead ones that fell off so yeah that's one way to identify it anyway get them all off my hand before i continue um yeah, so when if you do see those kind of leaves, like that example I've just shown you, that's what it is, just have a look. Um, you can, if you want to, go out and get yourself pesticides, if that's the way you feel. Personally, I won't do that because it'll kill all the good stuff in here that I need, the spiders, the bees, all the little flies that come in, the hoverflies, and of course the ladybugs, which help with the aphids. Um, the other thing that you could do is you could just continually keep keep all your windows and your greenhouse shut, your doors shut, on the hot days, if the temperature, the temperature one, if you get like a 25 degree temperature or a 20 and upwards temperature, the greenhouse will probably rise, can rise up to about 40 degrees. And if it does do that, that's no environment for these guys anyway. So they, that will put them off and they'll probably start dying back. Um, that's one way to combat them. But the Nemo effect is probably the best because it's the least harmful to the plant and to everything else around about it. The Nemo has the effect that it... It can kill them if it's used directly on them um, in conjunction with the dishwater. The dishwater, I think, the detergent in them will kill them. But the neem oil actually, I think it, it, it's kind of like chemical castration where they can't then breed. So that generation that you see on your plants 
when it dies is dead. So these are probably all walking dead sort of um, aphids as they are. And I may have already solved the problem because they do, they do, they regenerate very quickly. They breed very quickly. They spread very quickly. And, and that's half the battle with them. If you can stop them doing that, you've got more chance of winning. But I, pre I prefer not to use, like I say, chemical pesticides, that kind of thing. Um, at worst, I may be tempted to use an organic one, a pet friendly one. Because um, those ones tend to be low in toxins and less likely to harm your bees, etc. You will see a bee friendly stamp somewhere on a bottle um, if you get that. And I would advise you to get everything bee friendly because we need them. That's that's what's giving us these chilies. That's what's helping us uh, pollinate these. That's what's helping us pollinate everything out there. My squashes, all my plants. Um, and we, yeah, so it makes sense to do something that's not harmful. So if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. Please consider subscribing. There'll be more content like this. Um, there's always going to be problems. There's always going to be content. And there's always going to be solutions and questions, etc. And hopefully um, I'm answering some of those for you and helping you out a little bit. Thanks for watching.